It's a struggle. Bam! I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Mark. And you're listening oh. to the Yule Ray <laughs> Podcast. Hello! You okay over there? Every time is new. It's like a maiden voyage. I know. It's every time we do the podcast, it's like <laughs> the first time the ship has sailed. Oh, I got And you. now the ship is definitely, it's sailed over the horizon. It's like there's dolphins dancing in the moonlight. Oh. What's up? Nothing, man. How you doing? Good. Excited about this episode. I am too. You know, you came with this title and I thought it was a great title because it's something we actually talked about yesterday. We got on a Zoom call with like... A ton oh, right. of new Open Studio members. God, that feels like a lifetime ago. That was yesterday? It was yesterday afternoon, Peter. It wasn't even 24 hours ago, That buddy. was fun. New member hang. I was just an observer. That was amazing. It was great to meet everybody. Yeah. Welcome to Open Studio to all the new folks. We got a ton oh of new God, folks. Oh, my God. We have an and, onslaught of mem- new members. They're, they're so and exciting. They're so excited, and their energy is energizing us. Exactly. And we got a bunch of questions that uh, we thought uh, we could explore further here in our podcast, and one of them was... You know, when I'm struggling to practice, what do I do? Like when I'm struggling to figure out what I should be practicing, what should I do? It's a it's a common question. We get it all the time. Like, what do yeah. I do when I don't know what to practice? Or I have it sure. all the time. We get it all the time, and I question myself with this all the time as well. <laughs> well, it's a great question because, uh, and it's human nature, I think, to question, like, am I doing the right thing, right? Yeah. So yeah. first of all, if you are at the piano, yes, you're doing the right thing already. So that's that's a win. You'll Just hear getting it. to the instrument consistently should be your first priority. And then yeah. what you do on the instrument after that, of course, it matters for sure. But just developing your life so that you're living a very musical, consistent life, I think, can be the biggest game changer of all. First oh, and it's, it's huge. And yeah. that's probably the actually the biggest part of forming an effective habit. For you sure. You know what I mean? It's like showing up. Yes. Like we think so much of like, oh, I want to get into the habit of practicing my scales every day. I want to get into the habit of doing my bench presses every day or whatever. But really, the thing should be, I want you want to get into the habit of showing up at the instrument. That's right. And you've won. You've won. Yeah. You've now, won. Now, maybe play a little bit since yeah. you're there. <laughs> don't let, you know, if you're unsure of what you should be practicing, don't let that paralyze you into not practicing at all. Yeah. Just get your instrument and run something you know. Um, if you don't have any idea what to do, we have some ideas here for you. And one, yeah. I think... That is can be a game changer for people. It's something I've been preaching for the last year or so because it seems so obvious and nobody ever talks about this. But don't give it away. I yet. won't give it away yet. Because I want to first talk about what I think folks are thinking. I, I know I'm thinking about this now. It's like, hold on a second. Struggling with what to practice? Yeah, because there's so many great things to practice. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to YouTube. Thanks to great books, great recordings, great ideas. Maybe you go to a jam session and you hear like the overwhelm of great ideas can truly be overwhelming because like if you have some things that you know are not effective. Yes, the overwhelm can be overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm overwhelmed with just the thought. No, but I mean, we're talking about effective stuff. Like there's a yeah. whole nother thing of like, oh, I tried this out, it doesn't work for me. That's easy to get rid of. How about getting rid of something good? You know yeah, would I mean? that be something you might be interested exactly. in? Exactly. Yeah. Like, let's say you have four kids and you love them all. That's the hardest no, thing. I don't like where this if is going. If you have like two kids that you love and the other two, you're like, eh, of mm, course you can get rid of them. They're all right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, so it's like... The little one's kind of a scoundrel. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. But the idea of like, are you willing to put something back onto the bookshelf for another day? Like, are you willing to be at peace with that? Not to say like, this isn't good for me, but it's to say like, this other, like, like what is the timing of the right thing to practice on a particular day? Because we're all going to have days where like, you're bam, you're going through the routine and you're hitting everything. You're hitting your technique. You're hitting your transcription, your repertoire, your plan, you're killing killing it like don't set up your mindset for the perfect practice day that's right just be glad when that happens listen set yourself up for the worst practice we, day i think it's a tendency of especially people like us peter you piano geniuses? players oh piano sorry players, yeah, piano players. Gotcha. no uh and people our age and maybe even gender you mean young people you no know, okay. but like uh there's this whole optimization bro culture that's yeah. that's a part of our life i'm looking at you andrew huberman dude, right we now. are <laughs> as guilty as huberman and for dude, any i of love this that stuff. dude uh, can can I say he's? Can we form it? Are we Huber- both Huberman husbands? <laughs> like, if only he could talk about jazz piano, it would be like next level. I think that's our job, though. <laughs> no, but we we are as guilty of anybody as like trying to optimize your practice routine or get the most out of your time. And the truth is, is I don't know if art works that way all the time. I think right. you can go through stretches where you could be very productive um, by thinking about well, what can I get 
out of this that will optimize what I'm doing. But I also think that you do need to just run your head up against a brick wall with things yes. occasionally and be frustrated and then having to figure out a way to get around that wall or sometimes through it yeah. can be the most productive thing you can do. And that means frustration. That means boredom. That yeah. means uh, questioning whether you're doing the right thing. May, it might even stuff, feel like regression. It could feel like regression. Yeah. I don't know an artist alive who hasn't experienced that. It, yeah. It's not all just like perfect. I wake up and I take my my cold plunge and then I get to the piano and I feel refreshed and I've meditated for 30 minutes and I'm, I, you know what That's the way I mean? Huberman's morning is. Actually. That's the way kind of my morning is too. <laughs> but it, like a lot of mornings too, there were just like me with like no idea what to do and a bunch of cigarettes and we figure it out. You know what I mean? Like that's part of the the journey. Like I wouldn't have the the Huberman morning without that right. part of the journey as well. So exactly. don't, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dismiss anything that gets brought up by this. And if you're not feeling optimized, just embrace that as yeah. like, okay, well, I'm not, something is not efficient, but that doesn't mean that you don't live an artistic life. We've quoted Mono Neon's amazing mm. artist manifesto. It's his own personal artist manifesto that he puts at the end of a lot of his videos. If you don't know Mono Neon, go yeah. like and subscribe to everything he does. It's amazing. But uh, at the end of it, and I'm going to paraphrase here, uh, it's, it's actually, I don't even need to paraphrase, but I'm just going to, I have a computer. <laughs> Hello, computer. Right. I am going to input data. Please export the answer, computer robot. So, Mono Neon's manifesto, the, one of the very last things. Uh, let's see here. See how he's, how, see how he's vamping there? Notice, Until he notice gets my to the next skills. phrase. I got, I got like, vamp skills. I, I can change. Yeah, no, no, no. It's more like. <laughs> we're just, we're not changing the chord. We're just voice leading. No. Um, and that's a good choice. The last thing of, of Mano Neon's uh, art manifesto says, reject the worldly idea of becoming a great musician. Just live music. That is so powerful, right. man. Like, and if, you had a good paraphrase of that, live a musical life. Live like, a musical life. But you can life. extend yes. upon that, which is nice. The, and the ironic thing is if you design your life that you're just you're living a musical life, you're not, you sort of reject the worldly idea of becoming a great musician. Yeah. You tend to sound better. I know. <laughs> you, te you tend to be more original. You tend to be freer. You tend to practice more. You tend to play more. And that makes you better. Yeah. And I think it's an interesting uh, lens with which to look at the world beyond just look at your practice routine and look at your relationship with the instrument, which I would recommend as well. But it's like when you're thinking about the world and your instrument and your practice routine and your life in this way, that can get you through all different practice scenarios. It can certainly help you when you're on those kind of days when everything's falling into place. You might not think you need it. But then that becomes like a gratitude kind of a thing. Totally. Because you're like, wow, this is one of those days. And so you're not just, you don't take it for granted because that's really the opposite of the gratitude. It's like you understand that this is part of the journey. Now you're going to be better able to serve. Gratitude is the most amazing tool for this. Right. And it's, it can be, it can sound corny if you're not familiar with it, but like <laughs> actually practicing. Yeah, you little ingrates. Having a gratitude <laughs> practice with all of this, with your art, with your whatever, with your family, with your life. Will can't will and can change your life for the better and kind of make everything a little bit more comfortable. It is not corny. It's actually incredibly uh, an incredibly powerful tool. It's a cheat code. It's a cheat code it for is music 100%. and for life. Yeah. Because and it's not just music you can do this with, but that's what we know, right? Yeah. Um. And and the the cheat code part about it is like to live a musical life to frame your practice, your development, your interactions with music, your interactions with other musicians, your discussion around it, your, your trajectory, everything. You don't, the cheat code part of it is you don't have to be a genius like Mono Neon to live a musical life. Like it will meet you where you are if you're willing to well, meet music where you are, where and, it is. And does he live a musical life because he's a genius? Or is he a genius maybe because he decided egg. a long chicken time ago yeah. to live a musical life? Right. That, I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's a chicken and the egg. I think one right. is definitely uh, uh, leading the charge here. Well, and then it'll just guide you right into it because, like I'm saying, like when you're having those days when you're dialed in and everything, you're not going to be like, yeah, that's right. You're going to, that's going to make you humble if you're living That's a musical right. life. Cause you're going to be like, and so then when you get to the tough days, you're not going to be as down. And I think what we're talking about today is like, acknowledge the tough days. Don't get frustrated and leave the instrument. Acknowledge that you've already showed up. So yeah. you've already, you're already a winner. And you there's somebody, there's one thing you can do that will always be beneficial. Yeah. It will always work for you. No matter what instrument you play, no matter where you are in your musical journey, there is one thing that if you do this, you will get better every single time. And it happens to be something listen. that's really... In, yeah, actually. Oh, it, it is. is. Okay. It is listen. Oh, I was kidding. Yeah. No, uh, so 
you know, when people ask me, like, I'm struggling with what to practice, yeah. I always tell them, well, go back in your Spotify or your Apple Music, and what are, what, are, what are the albums that you've been listening to on repeat this last two months? Right. right? Not what are you supposed to be listening no, to. No, not what you... What have you assigned yourself? What is your heart go to when you want to listen to music? What makes your heart dance? Go identify what that is. Yeah. Now, currently. Currently. When, and then That's I ask, an important part of it. Currently. Yeah. Like, what do you? what lights you up right now? Yeah. And then when I ask the next question, I always get an, a no for an answer. And that question is, do you know any of the songs on this album? Yeah. Like, can you play them? Right. And most people say, no, I don't really know any of the songs on right. the album. Well, there's there's something to work on. That's like, right. if you are... And that's a, for the, just to clarify, this is for a struggle day. For any day, really. But if yeah. you are struggling, but especially this effective. can open up new doors and it always... Yeah. I mean, it never not works. Like, you are following your... As long as you're honest with yourself, I really love this music. I'm really curious about how it works. Yeah. Even if you go figure out just a small part of it, maybe it's just one little section yeah. that you love what's happening. Maybe it's the hits uh, at the end of the first chorus. Maybe it's a bit of language in the saxophone solo. Maybe it's a chord voicing that happens in the intro. Yeah. Maybe, what is the part within that you're listening when you're like, oh, that is so cool. Well, that is so uh, dope. It could be one note. It could be it one could be voicing. One note, like, right. why does that note that John Coltrane plays over that C minor chord sounds so amazing. Right. Go figure out why that is. Go figure out what it is and why it, it's reaching you the way it is. I am a harmony nerd, Peter, so a lot of my work on this is figuring out chord progressions, which yeah. is what I'm going to do today. I thought we could give a little example yes. Yes, yes, uh, yes. of music that we actually don't know time. as of right now. We right. still don't know it. But this is all. these are both things that we've chosen that we've been actively listening to the last few days, in fact. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Actually, what I've been listening to what I'm going to do here, I've been listening to for years, and I have I just realized, like, what is that chord progression? And we're, I'm going to figure it out right now. Nice. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And you know what's so cool about this, too? This is like, this activates uh, so many different uh, other elements. You know, we talked about gratitude. We talked about connecting with the music, obviously learning something that you're passionate about. Like it reignites things and energizes you away. That's why it's such a good thing to do on a day you're struggling. Like if you use this technique uh, on the days when you're struggling, it will automatically. It's like it's the it's like going to get an espresso or something. It's like it tastes good, but it also gets your mind going. Like it it brings you up exactly to where you need to go, and that's why. If you think about this as kind of a default fallback, it can be very effective. Just like, you know, if, if you walk into a room and you're like, I'm always so interested in talking to people, and then you're like, uh oh, I don't have anything in common with people. What's the lowest common denominator? What's the default that you can go back? To? Well, we're all humans. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you speak different languages, maybe you're different from different parts of the world, whatever, but like, what is that thing? And so, this is that type of activity, I think, that if you make it as a default, it can be very effective. But let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. Uh, let's rock, paper, scissors, see who goes first, right? Okay. Rock, rock paper, scissors, shoot. Bam. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Boom. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Boom. Come on now. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Boom. Get out of town. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, oh come on. Oh, I go got it. Right. Okay. Um, is it rock, paper, scissors, boom, bam? Okay, anyway, we got it. Why would you add an extra beat? <laughs> rock, paper, scissors, boom, uh. What's the boom? <laughs> da, 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 boom, bam. I don't know. Who knows? We've never played that before. Um, okay, so I'm going to take this because I was just listening to this in the car because it's been showing up on my Spotify because we recently did a video called The Real 10 Greatest Jazz Albums, blah, blah, blah. But this is Trying Times by Roberta Flack, which is Amazing. literally the last this thing I was listening to. This is my favorite thing on that whole list. Yeah. Maestro Ron Carter on the bass. So that little thing there, yes. that's what I want to focus on. It's such a good thing to focus on. It's such a simple sounding voicing, but... So this is A, right? So um, one thing is like when you're learning this kind of stuff, like just to find, you can always just kind of peek around into there, but you know that that's either D or A uh, because do we hear the open string from Mr. You hear the way that's ringing? So we, we know that's either D and A and D or G because those are notes on the bass. But that, yeah, so now we're already going into this first voicing from a Roberta Flack. What is it? Yeah. Is that? I think it's something like that. So we have, this is like an A7 sus chord. It's Is that A doubled, I wonder? I think so. 
Maybe she's not even playing the low. It would be tripled with the low. Or is it just four notes? That's fun. I love. Yeah, definitely goes down to. Like you hear that kind of sometimes. Okay, this is a little thing for transcribing. For piano chords, you can hear the attack. That's your first opportunity, but you can also hear the ring. Yeah. So there's like. It's definitely I don't hear that. Four notes. But then that doesn't sound like like. Check out the ring. Is that G there at the bottom? I don't know. Maybe not. Then obviously it's just one note. That's genius, right? Yeah. But you do it again from the top. Yep. I think it's just that, right? That would be no G in it. Say again. Yep, I'm trying here, buddy. I think there's a G. Well, then there's no A then. It might not be. Which would make sense. This would be like a little. That would, with no doubling, would be a stronger voice. Yeah, there's definitely. Yeah, I don't think there's a double. So there, I mean, there it's like you've accomplished something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we trained our ears, we got this cool voicing, we got reinforcement. The doubling is not. That is amazing work, work, right? So now, like well, if we were gonna say, let's play an A blues with Ron Carter, we'd be like. <laughs> but, see, but Roberta Flack's just like. And then the patience. Oh, ah, it's beautiful. So now, what would you do with that? Just revel in it. Just, just revel just bathe just in the. No, you could take it around to different. Right. You know. Well, let's see where she goes next. I think. Also, check out the timing. Right on the beat. You know, if you think about Ron Carter, you know, like he's getting that gets. nice, like light syncopation. So Roberta can just be. So nice. Very simple. Beautiful that, sounding piano, too. Yeah. Ringing. Oh. Oh, you can hear it. Oh, she does play the, she plays the low A there. I definitely heard that. She rolls it. Yeah. Yeah. So this, so it's an A7 sus chord, and she's playing on that one at least. G, A, D, E, A. I think she's playing A, G, D, E, A. Uh-oh. Wait. E, A? Hello, the feds are coming. Oh, boy. Wait, you think he's playing yeah. that? Check it out. Listen to the beginning. Of it. I heard that to start. Yeah, that's a great voice. And I, She's gonna go somewhere. So. No. Yeah. So that I believe. Can you? Play again? Yep. This is over the four, of course. One, two, three, four. So there's so G there on the bottom. Yep. No D. I think maybe C E A. Yeah, definitely C E A. But I think the D on the. Put a big D on the bottom. Maybe. I don't think she does. Oh really? Right, so that's that's a good thing. You stop it right away, and you can hear it. Just G. There's four notes, and then so again, this is a D7 sus, and the voicing is G C E A. So good, like a C6 voicing. Yep. And then she's, she'll resolve the G down, the sus down to the third. In such a subtle Ooh. way. Oh. Uh, and then she's gonna spell but it. But then out the way for it's us. voicing down, like it's like doom. Yeah, it's just trailing off. So chill. That's so good. So, I mean, like, this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. Like, look how excited we are. Like, could you imagine on a time? And you look, you may not get every I mean, one I don't of know. Those. We could have done this, too. <laughs> That's fun some You days. don't know what to practice. That's but isn't right. this better? Like, we're you're learning about not just, like, the theory behind what Roberta Flack is playing over, you know, an A7 sus and a D7 sus, 
but how she's doing it. Right. And these little details that you're learning. And this could be it. This doesn't have to be like, I got to transcribe the whole thing. No. Just get the parts that you're lit up by and then stop. Yeah. And then you go know? out the street and get lit or, up. Or take it in some varying ways. See if you can maybe, well, what is, like, break it down. Okay, so this D7 sus here, like I said, it's like a C6 shape, right? Yeah. C, E, A, uh, G, A in a little drop two. Yeah. So I can, I can kind of figure this out in different inversions yep. even. Yeah. It all works. All of those now. And now I've got a month of stuff to practice just from these eight bars. Yeah. And for those of you that are like, oh, that's fine, but you guys are getting it quicker than I'm getting, would be getting it. That's, that's, there's always, you know. True. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, but some of the really parts that you can learn, like when I thought I was hearing the D at the bottom, which sounds good still, yeah, but then great. you hear she's not. So then it's like, you're not like, oh, it took, okay, yeah, you got some ear training from that, but it's also like you have options now. Like, how does that sound different? Like with the bass and without the bass. Like yeah, how yeah. how is that different? And then how is it different when and she does that real light on top of it? You know, it's not always just about the notes, it's the way that they're played, it's the nuance. And again, and it's not always like, oh, now I've got this voicing I can play if I ever play this too. No, you can use this in so many, you know, different situations. What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Great stuff. Absolutely. All those inversions, taking it through the the keys and figuring it out. Um it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And by the way, this is not groundbreaking. This is how music has been passed along for now since the invention of recorded music. Yeah. But before that, through studying live music and sheet music, mus musicians figuring it out and go figure it out. There's nothing better for you than to yeah, go figure it out. Yeah, this is like the, you know, oh, I want to learn how to, you know, make this stream deck thing. Let's if you're an engineer, you're, you're tinkering. You, you open it up. You're yeah, like, oh, exactly. how does this work? That's exactly oh, right, oops. Peter. Oh, wait, let me put that back in. No, you know how like, many people come up to me and are like, I don't know what you're talking about in your shorts or whatever. I like, I watch them all and I love them, but I, I don't know the words you're talking about. Why, why do you guys do that? And it's like, well, it's like an engineer yeah. who takes apart a clock and is like, how does this digital clock work? And then figures out, you know, how the circuits work and everything like that. It's, it's your job as a musician to take apart specifically the things that you love, not the things that Peter and I don't go. If you don't are not feeling the Roberta Flack, don't go do that. Right. Go well, that's why it. we started. We say go to just let Spotify, wherever you listen, like go to your LP, whatever you what, what do you have up there? Not what do you think we think you should totally. have? 100 percent. Yeah. Can I do mine? Yes. Can Caleb, can we put this on screen? We're going on. screen. So this might be one of my favorite musicians in the last 15 years, 10 years, maybe. This gotcha. is thank you. Yeah. This is Gabriel Kahane, uh, composer, pianist, singer. Definitely more from the classical side of things. I believe his father is a fairly well-known conductor. Um, but he is amazing. He's made some of my favorite albums in the last five years. Mm. And this is from one of the albums. This is like a live video they made in an apartment. I'm not sure whose apartment. But it's a it's an orchestra in this Brooklyn apartment. And mm. I love this recording more than I love the album version. I wow. think this is a better performance than the album version. Mm. Uh, and it's an 11-minute piece, and there's actually a couple of different, maybe three different song structures within this piece. And the part in the middle is amazing. It's a it's a piece called Empire Liquor Mart, and it's a really wow. It's, really got, it's got the actual address of the Empire. That must be L.A. address. Yeah, it's South actually a, it's, a, it's a pretty terrible story oh, behind it. Um, but there is a part in the middle that it just hits me so hard and I was thinking about it this morning actually as we were talking about what we would want to listen to and I was like I really want to figure out that song within the song yeah so I just want to figure out the chord progressions it also okay. has some of the best lyrics the, this this song within a song the chorus is let is um, uh, nobody reads from the book of Job at the church where me and my grandma go and the the way that he he syncopates the, the lyric mm. this that lyric itself nobody reads from the book of Job at the church where me and my grandma go tells an entire little paints a portrait of these people yeah. that is so vivid and then the way that he phrases it is great but the chord progression itself and then he, the, he's a master at orchestration and it's any, any of it he's is a fair master game. Mas master straighter Watch master it. orchestrator just i'm master. not a fan of i'm not a fan of that but uh we could get any of that we could get yeah. the lyrics we could get the orchestration but i i just want to get the chord progression because it's so compelling let's listen yep. to the build up to it and then we'll listen to the full little song and then we'll figure it out by the way do you recognize that bass player no wait where is it 
up on the bunk bed. Is that Adam Neely? It is Adam Neely on this. Wow. I met him. Just he has the microphone. Just keep out from getting bored, from getting bored. Did they put a harp in that little apartment? From fires and fixtures that fill the sky. It was never so bright when I was young. I was too young to die. Huh. Yeah. This stuff is so good, man. So well done. And to play it in an apartment in separate rooms. Yeah. Check out this transition. When my grandma was a young woman, he sang for this. She thought the town was no good to us. She took a greyhound just as far as it could take her, felt to make her in the winds. How God moves through us. Yeah. The, no, no, nobody the break reads from the book of Job at the church where me and my grandma go. So beautiful. So let's see. I think it. Um, nobody reads from the book of Job right? at the church where me and my grandma go. Nobody sees the trouble, I, the trouble I know. But I know that trouble's gonna find me. Simple. Okay. So that's four. Four, yes. Yeah. Six. This is the chord that I was most excited about. This sort of two. It's all that's diatonic. Like minor eleven, huh? Well, oh, that's my that's my addition. Oh, that's your number. So it'd be like. Uh, Nobody reads from the book of Job at the church where me and my grandma go. Nobody sees the trouble I know, but I know that trouble's gonna find me. That's it. It's a, it's a nice. Way That's to get all there. I need. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna like figure it. So this is the part. I've never written a song that has like the five to the two. And that's super compelling. Can we me. give some thanks that chord changes cannot be copywritten right now? Can we give out a little shout? If you hear shout out to all the attorneys in the house. <laughs> shout out to the legal precedent. <laughs> So that's a great five to two. Five to two. I'm stealing that. That's the part I'm taking away. I'm going to see if I can come up with, I mean, I can't come up with anything as compelling as that. That's It's like so a very like, traveling song kind of movement, you know? Totally. Very James Taylor. Let's take it back. She thought the town was no good to us. 
She took the greyhound just as far as it could take her Felt to make her in the waves How God moves through us Three Seven Seven Woo, it's good I was six years old when we followed from a moon's to The light was magic, the light was true She thought we moved beyond the shared path you know what I like before that too, kid? Yeah. So it's like so A minor to E minor, and then not seven like half diminished, but B minor. Yeah, straight. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Oh, we were just upon the accuser's bed. Nobody reads from the book of Job and the church Five, family. Two. Four. Nobody sees the six. Very basic. Thank you, Gabriel Kahane. Yeah, yeah. Great. Again, nothing revolutionary about that, but I didn't know that. And yeah. I, I Man, wanted to. such a great reminder that, like, the order and the cadence of chords. Oh, dude. Is everything. I mean, how many like, times that's... do we do 2 5, but you ever do 5 2? I know. <laughs> yeah, the order of that. And then the pace, like, the cadence and the yeah. pacing of it. You can take, like you said, there was nothing. There was some interesting stuff, you know, before that. In yeah, the, the. Well, I love. All of that. Yeah, and I love the like yeah. from the one to the two dominant and then to the two minor and then to the six. We'll put a link to both this Gabriel Kahane's uh, YouTube video of Empire Lic Liquor Mart as well as uh, to uh, the, what was the title? Try Times. Try, Try and Times. Times. Roberta Flack. From Roberta Flack. Yeah, we'll go to, we'll link to the 10 greatest jazz. That's actually, uh, spoiler alert, that's number one. Hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, this is super fun. So if you're struggling with what to practice, look at your record collection. What have you been listening to the most the last month or two months? And go figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Till next time. You'll hear it.